<laughs> the short answer is no. Um, you know, one of the things I love about the question was, is there something, is there a class of company I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely dying to see? Uh, you know, the reality of it is, is I'm surprised every week when I come into work and talk to a different founder that gives me a new idea for how the future will look. Uh, that's where most of the interesting innovations in this company, in this business come from. Uh, and, and so I've long ago figured to stop trying to outs outsmart the founder community and, and I listen to you guys pretty carefully and that's where, that's where I get my inspiration. Leverage. I mean, it was really as simple as that. The, the Acades guys came in and showed us that they could participate in a market uh, for an amount of capital, which was a very small fraction of what the incumbents were participating in that market in, and more importantly, that they could innovate in that market and do things that people didn't even think were possible. Uh, the key thing is you don't want to start out raising uh, you know, $10 million so that five years later you can be doing $20 million a year in revenue the same way your competitors are. You, you want to be like an Acades, which is causing, frankly, the engine business to completely rethink how it operates, how its products operates, the fundamental technology. And, and those are the kinds of, of companies that are able to raise larger, uh, larger Series A's. Well, look, bad, bad news is a part of building any great company, uh, you know, and I don't know that I would use the term turnaround to describe what's going on there. Uh, I think the reality of it is, is that the, the startup business requires readjustments in, in business models over time. Uh, many companies undergo sort of realignments in, in how they deploy capital and, and even the markets they go after. And, and I've talked about this in previous startup schools. Some of the greatest companies we've been involved with have gone through adjustments, big adjustments in, in their go-to-market strategy and their capital strategy, their product and their technology strategy. And, and I think Rock Use is very, very similar in that way. Well, I, I think first of all, there, there, there is uh, the question was how do entrepreneurs interact with with VCs in the latter stages of, of building their companies? You know, look, I think here is the challenge with answering that 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 question. Th there is no such thing as a VC community. The, the spectrum of folks who call themselves venture capitalists um, is, is absolutely massive. You have folks who who see themselves as as company builders. They get involved very early on, oftentimes before Series A, uh, and they are involved with companies years after the IPO. That's clearly the case with my partnership and with me personally. Uh, and then you have folks who are really more like investors. Uh, they get in at a point of time and they get out at, in a point of time. And I think uh, the relationship with the entrepreneur uh, is going to be very different depending on whether or not they bring on board company builders or they bring on board investors. Company builders, frankly, for them there is no late stage of a company. It's a later stage of the company. The work we do when we work with founders is different. Uh, even post IPO, but at the end of the day, it's still about company building. And, and if you're working with an investor on that end of the spectrum, I think that's going to be your relationship with them. If you're working with an investor who is thinking of this as a financial transaction, I could imagine with them there'd be pressure at any point in time, even before a, a liquidation event, for them to get out of the stock. Well, I, you know, you know. That's a meaning of life scale question that I wouldn't even attempt to answer for you. What I will tell you is um, optimizing for money as a, as a goal typically is not something we see in the greater companies that we work with. I, I can't speak to the happiness piece, but you know, the guys that founded Cisco and, and Google and you know, Amazon, they, they all seem pretty happy to me. Uh, <laughs> I think the important point, though, uh, is that these folks were optimizing for building really great businesses over a long period of time and from that you know oftentimes came great wealth and I would argue generally some level of happiness but look you talk to any of the founders and, and senior executives of those major companies and they will tell you about really tough times they went through so it clearly wasn't a happy ride from start to finish. Well, uh, and that's a very common question. The question is, how, how do you pitch Sequoia if you're not part of Y Combinator? Um, you know, what I recommend is go find a founder, former or present, 
uh, who is in a business which is in some way similar to yours for a couple of reasons. One, they'll understand it and get it and have some authority when they recommend you. And two, if I get a recommendation from a founder about a company in a related business, that cuts through the noise. And it doesn't have to just be a founder. Uh, it can be a, an executive, the CEO, somebody you know in a company that we're involved with. That's a wonderful conduit to us. So I, I can give you rough numbers that changes from, from, from year to year. Just here in Menlo Park, we have offices in other places, obviously, but just here in Menlo Park, uh, we, we examine on the order of six, seven, eight thousand business plans in, in, in any given year. Now, by examine, I mean we may only read the first paragraph, but in many cases, we do more than read the first paragraph. We have multiple meetings. Uh, quite a few of them end up having uh, partnership meetings. Uh, but that's sort of the order of magnitude of the input of the funnel. Uh, and then in terms of number of investments on the other side, uh, on the early stage, it's probably somewhere between 20 and 25 investments a year, maybe one third to 40 percent of that being sort of seed investments, less than $300,000, uh, and the rest of it being more traditional Series A's. So the, the level of interest of, uh, in that is actually in some cases quite high. Uh, you know, we, we invest in founders that not only have little business experience, but in some cases, I think we, we committed to a Series A investment recently in a, in a founder of a company who's 19 years old. Uh, and he was 18 when he started in Y Combinator. And, and, and what we look for are, uh, what were the life choices that that person made early on? And how did they think about building things? And what is their level of commitment to the business? But probably the most important thing we look for is, what is the genesis of the idea? One of the things we look for is authenticity. Uh, what we look for is folks who have a very good reason for caring about the problem that they're solving. Sometimes that means they're literally solving their own problem. In fact, oftentimes with consumer services companies, uh, they're solving the problem they had early on in life. Uh, but other times, we, we end up investing in founders who may not have had the problem, but were very close. They were tangentially re related to the folks who had the problem, and there's a lot of authenticity in their, in sort of their, their understanding of the need. But, but the net of it is, is that we're in the business of investing in founders that sometimes have zero experience, oftentimes have zero directly re uh, re relevant experience, and so oftentimes we have conversations with them about the rest of their life and, and how they think about things. Well, I categorically, no, we have not been pushed into making smaller investor investments. I'll, I'll say that because, uh, you know, we've been making small investments for 35 years. Uh, if anything, we, we'd love to see more opportunities. I think I, met, I think I implied that here to get companies off the ground with smaller and smaller checks because it's a, a wonderful leading indicator. Uh, the determining factor for us is nothing that competition does. It comes down to what you as the founding community are able to create as businesses. If you can create more of those businesses, we will gladly get involved and in business with you. And if it means writing a smaller check, do that as well. <laughs> All right, I'll give a personal plug. Um, I, have a, uh, uh, I have a program called Touch Plan HD up on the App Store for iPhone users that allows pilots to do flight planning, and that's the, currently what I've, I'm, I'm working on, and uh, have a few thousand paying users. So. <laughs> Look, I, I don't have a lot of time to write a whole lot of code here, but, but I do think it's important for what we do at Sequoia uh, that we stay very, very close to the company building process at the very early stages. Uh, we, we get, look, we get involved with companies when oftentimes uh, there's very little code written and sometimes there's no code written whatsoever. If you lose sight of what it takes to go from an idea to that first early version, uh, you miss an awful lot, both in terms of opportunities and risks in this business, and it's one of the things that we, the partnership, try to stay close to. Oh well, I, I, I like five five minutes before I got on stage. Uh, have, have you tried to use a cell phone around here recently? I mean, the, the serious point here is, you know, folks often ask me. Um, why do you spend so much time with consumer services and, and consumer IT? Isn't it all over? And the first question I ask them is, is, is how much do you like your phone? How much do you like your cellular carrier? How much do you like your computer? How much do you like your word processing software? How much do you like your email service? 
the, the fact of the matter is we, we could be decades away from coming even close to perfecting consumer services technology. And if anything, I'm, I'm a little bit frustrated that in the last 10 years we've made so little progress, although I'm very hopeful because of something I mentioned earlier. I, I, I think that uh, for the first time in a long time, consumers are, are rethinking their personal processes. Folks who would have never carried a phone or used mobile email are using it now. That's bringing a much larger percentage of the population into the business and creating the revenue momentum necessary to get really great companies to spend a lot of time focusing on them. Even more importantly, it's creating activity in the startup community. You folks are focusing now on solving some of these problems that I would argue 10 years ago you wouldn't have worried about, you, didn't, you wouldn't have seen the market opportunity. Thank you very much.